This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. We're back. We're live <clears throat> Thursday morning. Whoa! I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. And more specifically, this is Community Matters, I think. Okay, and we have special guests. Uh, we have the CEO of Planned Parenthood of the Great Northwest and Hawaiian Islands, uh, Chris, Christine Charbonneau. And we have a board member also, um, Marjorie Al. Thank you very much for being here, both of you. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. So pleased yeah, to be here. Yeah, yeah. Great to, great to have you. Come, mm -hmm. come to Hawaii. You live in Hawaii. Um, and then you get together and you have meetings and you talk to people and you and you find out yet again there's a lot of love for Planned Parenthood here in Hawaii. Hawaii is wonderful and miraculous <laughs> in this way and we appreciate every single person here. Yeah, I've seen you, I've seen you. We know each other. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, <clears throat> and Marjorie and me, well, we're kind of in the same firm, but hey, <laughs> we know each other. <laughs> so uh, I want to talk about what it means to be CEO of Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. for the Great Northwest and Hawaiian Islands. Mm -hmm. what, what does it mean? What do you do in the morning when you get up? Well, I take care of four states worth of Planned Parenthood, Washington, Idaho, Alaska, and Hawaii. Um, and right now being the CEO of Planned Parenthood means being in the eye of the tornado. Ah, uh, we're going to get into that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Marge, what, what do you, Marjorie, what do you do for the board? I mean, are you an active member? I guess you are. You, you, you're here. <laughs> I, I certainly am. And I really love being an advocate for Planned Parenthood in different ways in terms of strategic planning, implementation, fund development, being in touch with folks in the community. And we have such a lovely, strong community behind yeah. Planned Parenthood, and it's very much appreciated. Yeah, yeah. I, I met uh, Chris at, uh, at, at the home of the Whites uh, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Maisie Hirono was right. there to talk, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a strong crowd. Uh, mm -hmm. so, all of them, including me and my wife, felt mm -hmm. very strongly about what you do. Thank you. You're, you're a mainstay in the development of our society. Mm -hmm. um, tell us when you got started and, and why and how and, and how you have evolved since then. I'm celebrating 35 years in leadership at Planned Parenthood and um, 25 actually in our affiliate as it's put together. Um, and biggest honor recently is being given the opportunity by Marjorie and fellow board members to make sure that this goes well in Hawaii. Um, and so it, it's been a real adventure over the years. I've been through many, many, many um, administrations worth of presidents, seen how various people handle women, decision-making rights, um, and um, have had the opportunity to work in a great many states to figure out how states can do their part in protecting all of those services and rights um, for families and people to live their best lives. Mm. Did um, Planned Parenthood exist before Roe v. Wade? Absolutely. Um, Planned Parenthood is 100 years old this oh, year oh, oh, oh. and 50 years old here in Hawaii. What was the initial you know, mission on it and mm -hmm. how has that changed, if at all? Well, Margaret Sanger and her colleagues smuggled diaphragms into New York City uh, 100 years ago. It's against the law. Yes, yeah, absolutely against the law in pickle vats. They, they labeled them pickles. I love so the that, story. I know, so that nobody would uh, know what was in there. And it was illegal to use them, it was illegal to sell them, it was illegal to educate about them and talk about them. So a good many women, um, middle and upper class women, interestingly, went to jail um, to prove the concept that um, women really needed to be able to do this and that it was not obscenity, that it was actually part of the mainstream. And um, thanks to all the supporters of Planned Parenthood over the many, many decades, um, now using contraception has become incredibly normative. It's part of the Affordable Care Act, all the insurance policies include it now, um, and it's seen as part of what creates a healthy society, and I couldn't agree more. Yeah, yeah. So. Um Roe v. Wade, you know, to me was very important. I'll, I'll tell you why. There was mm -hmm. a specific incident, you know, when I was in school, a good friend of mine, his girlfriend got pregnant. Yeah. And uh, th there was no choice for them. Their parents would have thrown them out of the house, mm -hmm. would have been the end of their schooling, mm -hmm. would, have, would have been terrible. Mm -hmm. So they found a, a place on the docks in mm -hmm. Brooklyn that was a woman that was going to help them, so yep. to speak. And uh, it was dangerous business, yes. it was coat hanger business. Mm -hmm. And um, we went down there for moral support. Mm -hmm. It happened. Mm -hmm. She she was okay. Mm -hmm. She and they're happily married today. Mm -hmm. um, but it was so shattering to see sure. the depths that they had to sink right. in order to in order to save their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it was mm -hmm. so easy if this thing had just been legal. Right. 
Um, and I um, personally that defined my view of it since then. And then Roe v. Wade came along, and that was a, an enlightenment. And mm -hmm. I thought, wow, what a great country we live in. Mm -hmm. What a fabulous system. Yeah. What, what moral, ethical people are running this place. Good mm -hmm. for the Supreme Court. And then something happened. I don't know what happened mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, there were people attacking it. Mm -hmm. And first it was shrill, but after a while, it was relatively successful. Mm -hmm. They are working hard today. Yeah. And your organization has had to beat them back mm -hmm. all this time. Mm -hmm. What happened in this country? Well, when I was um, a y very young 20s and began to work at Planned Parenthood, um, I once got a chance to sit in an audience with Gloria Steinem talking to us. And she said, never forget, this is not about a romance with babies. This is not about actually um, any of that. This is about controlling women at its heart. And ultimately, while abortion seems like something you could have a debate about, the issue is really making sure that women don't leave their lane, that they stay where they belong. And therefore, at some point, um, the opposition to us in our movement is going to have to go after contraception. And I thought, what could she be talking about? Like. Who could credibly go after contraception now? And Jay, we're seeing that. We're seeing that every day. Suddenly, it's let's redefine half the birth control methods and call them abortifacients, even though they're not. Um, it's why should we cover these things in insurance? It covers everything else, including Rogaine for male pattern baldness. <laughs> but let's not, you know, let's not do contraception because somehow that's frivolous. Um, and we're really seeing an attack every day on just women's right to use birth control methods and, and uh, define when their families, when they're gonna have babies and what their families are gonna look like. And it's a front to every couple in America. This reminds me of that, that old uh, concept that sex, sexual uh, abuse, harassment, it's not about sex, it's about power. That's right. And the same thing here in a parallel. Mm -hmm. Um, this whole anti-abortion movement that has existed, I guess before and mm -hmm. now after Roe mm -hmm. v. Wade, um, it's not about it's not about abortion. It's about about recognition of women. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, these people want to put down women. That's mm -hmm. what the, that's what really at the heart of it. Do you agree? Absolutely, absolutely. That's what it's about. It's about women shouldn't be allowed to decide these things. And um, you know, you know that because I have been witness to all kinds of um, anti-choice people who bring their daughters in for abortion services. And when you ask them how they can manage to make that transition in their head, they'll say things like, well, you know, I asked God and God said it was okay this time. <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't have that kind of Verizon easy connection yeah, well, to the almighty. Terrific, um, terrific telephone. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. But, but, um, but basically it's like because I could decide it, not her. Yeah. Um, and I say what happens. Yeah. And so, you know, all the rest of this, um, there are people who, who generally, gen, genuinely have sort of been bought into various pieces of this tale. But um, at its heart, the people who organize th these things are not about any kind of superior morality. And we saw that play out this last week in Alabama. We've seen this play out it's this very last... very interesting what happened. Yeah. We've seen this play out in the last bit of time. It, it, it's um, all kinds of deals being made to allow people to retain power um, let's put aside uh, any kind of moral situation while at the same time trying to claim the moral high ground. And I think that it, it's never been so transparent as that is now. Yes, right. And maybe maybe we have a sort of national recognition by yes. virtue of what happened in Alabama. Mm -hmm. So Marjorie, you know, uh, how, how much of what Chris has said do you agree with? Completely, 101%. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that it started partly with the election that we saw it come out, the misogyny mm -hmm. really manifested itself against the candidate. Mm -hmm. And then I think the Me Too uh, movement that has taken place has been a reaction to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, my sister-in-law, Linda Greenhouse, she used to write for the New York Times. She mm -hmm. wrote for the New York Times on the Supreme Court for 30, 30 more years. And she wrote a book. Mm -hmm. she was, she's very interested in Roe v. Wade, mm -hmm. even as a reporter. Mm -hmm. And um, the book was called Before Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting to find you know, what was going on in this country, mm -hmm. what was going on with women before Roe v. Right. Wade. It's so clear, uh, you know, how, how a lack of Roe v. Wade, mm -hmm. uh, a lack of allowing women to make their own choice, mm -hmm. uh, undermines the society. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. Well, women used to die mm -hmm. all the time. 
um, people aren't used to it now. The idea that a woman would die from something like this is so shocking to all of us, even those of us in the middle of this, that you know it's almost unthinkable. Um, when the, the history of this century is written, one of the huge advances of this century will be called out as Roe v. Wade. Um, almost nothing changes a mortality rate to that degree. Um, and so there are a few things like that, contraception also being one. Um, when people have control of their fertility, they live longer. When people have control of their fertility, they can keep their education going. When people have control of their fertility, they get and keep jobs that they need. The next generation becomes more educated. There is simply no bad side of being able to contracept, no bad side of being able to make your own reproductive you know, On the other hand, there is a terrible bad side if you don't allow a contraception. That's right. Uh, and, and it does wreck your life, and, mm -hmm. and extending that wrecks our society, mm -hmm. and our society mm -hmm. according you know, to the book, and That's right. we all know of our own knowledge That's right. how much trouble there was before Roe v. Wade. Now, we are very fortunate in Hawaii to have Governor Burns, who was Catholic, yes. but rose above to be able to see how yes. choice would benefit our society. This was one society. of the first mm -hmm. states Just that permitted one of the abortion. First states. Yes. One of the very yes. first, some, a real claim um, to foresight yeah. on Hawaii, and in fact, uh, being in four states, I have to say, the excitement I had coming to Hawaii is I believe Hawaii is in the position to tell the rest of the United States how this needs to exactly work. And um, so it's my new plan that every innovative thing needs to start here, and then we'll roll it across the rest of the West Coast and the Northeast, yeah. and after that, there will be critical mass. Yeah. Hawaii, the point of the arrow. Yeah. And this yeah. is the wonder of having a blue state, two blue states versus two red states in our affiliate, that mm -hmm. the blue states can be leveraged very well against the red state. Right, <laughs> right. Okay, on that note, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, I want to ask you more about how Planned Parenthood is organized, mm -hmm. what it does, uh, you know, how it operates, and how we can find out more. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> She said, What are you doing? Research says reading from birth accelerates our baby's brain development. Push! Ah! Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Oh, hi guys. It's RB Kelly. I'm your host of Out of the Comfort Zone, where I find cool people with cool solutions to problems that all of us face. Now, the thing is, we're really cool. And I only invite really cool people, but the thing is, I think you're kind of cool too, so I think you should come and watch. That's Thursdays at 11 a.m. here on OC16 Television with Think Tech Hawaii. I'm R.B. Kelly, host of Out of the Comfort Zone, and I will see you next Thursday. <laughs> okay, it's Community Matters, and we have the honor of having with us the CEO of Planned Parenthood of the Great Northwest and Hawaiian Islands, and a member of the board, that is Chris uh, Charbonneau and also Marjorie Al. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Thanks, Jay. I want to I want to go into uh, you know exactly how you're organized, how you what you do, how you do it, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So let's start with that. Uh, you have this this region. It's blue states and red states. That's right. Both. Right. It's very interesting region. I'm sure it is. It is. So uh, how do you how do you uh, you say so travel to Hawaii? We like that, mm -hmm. but but how do you how do you function? I mean, you have offices in all major cities. Right. Uh, yes. How do you, what do they do? So um, we have when we did the merger, we had very good people in all the of merger the, in the region. The merger right. to create the region. So Washington, Alaska, and and Idaho and Hawaii, we had um, very talented people in all those places. People we wanted to retain. So we have a little bit of administration in each of those states, um, and then we have sort of an, a flyover administration, including me, we, and I move myself around. Um, but it's really the kind of structure that um, inter the internet and, and modern communications make possible. Yeah. Um, we can see each other um, for our meetings. We don't all have to be in the same room, breathing the same air. You know, when I'm on airplanes, except for going across the Pacific, I have internet access, can stay fairly well connected. 
Um, you know, so, you know, I really feel like I've been in meetings with the people that I'm not in the same room with, but, yeah. you know, that are on the it's other a, end of the It's kind team. of a, a movable meeting. It, it is. It's sort of like, it sort of doesn't matter where anyone <laughs> sure. is, so you can use what talent you, might as well use the technology. you have wherever it is. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so um, it's been ab absolutely delightful. And to Marjorie's earlier, earlier point, having Washington and Hawaii be, be blue and having Idaho and Alaska be red um, means that we can basically use the strength of, of Hawaii and Washington to make things better for the women in Alaska and Idaho. Yeah. And but also for Hawaii, though, because yeah. we merged about three years ago, and of mm -hmm. course, being an old-time board member from the Hawaii board, there's always some trepidation and some territorial protection, sure. cultural competency Any merger issues. has that. Right. Sure. But I would say it's been so positive in every way. And the main thing is that you want to deliver the best possible health care services to your patients. Yeah. And we're really headed in that direction. And its economies of scale in terms of converting over to electronic medical records when you've got four states sharing an all-in-one system. Implementation and maintenance is so much more sensible. So things have changed. It's oh, improved. absolutely. In you you the take right lessons direction. from the Pacific Northwest, <laughs> at least the blue states there anyway. <laughs> So uh, who's your uh, who's your local CEO then, your or chair of the board, whatever it's set up? Well, we have an overall board chair for all four states, the total affiliate. Oh, I see. And oh, the board state, is yes. through the region. That's right. Ah, and each state is represented by board members. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. So we all meet as a complete board right. of the four states. And oh, the only rule we had was, if you're going to be on the board, you have to care about all the states. You can, Fair you can enough. tell us about your home, but you need to care about all of it. And, and I think it's proof that that worked really well when we got the opportunity to invest in a giant new building in Honolulu to put our big headquarters here. Um, Where is every, that? It's on Baratania Street, and we're in the process of building it. Very nice. Um, that there was huge excitement on the part of the whole yes. board. Yes, and I think the merger really facilitate, facilitated having this so-called dream come true where you own the land and the building and can really build your services yeah. to serve the entire state. Yeah. yeah, that's great. How about volunteers? You have a lot of volunteers? Mm -hmm. Yes, on, what, on every island. So what, what, what is the you know, mechanic, mechanics of, of the operation? Mm -hmm. you're, you're raising money. Yes. That's part of your job. Yes. It's part of your job, I, mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, what, how do you spend the money? What's, mm -hmm. what's the action plan you know, for, mm -hmm. for making this work? Well, I will say that right now, um, with the election of Donald Trump, the support of Planned Parenthood has skyrocketed. People see uh, giving to organizations like the ACLU and the, uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center and Planned Parenthood as an act of resistance. Yeah, yeah. Um, and part of that is because it's those kinds of things that are being attacked. Um, and so we very much appreciated all of the support that has come from that. Um, the, the way the, the fundraising works is right now because we're really making sure we are as, um, a, as deep into Hawaii as we want to be, and we have big plans about that. Um, all the money that is raised in Hawaii obviously stays in Hawaii. I'm, ah, I'm, good. This I'm, is not always the case. That's not you? always the case. And so I'm good. really glad to say that Seattle, where we're lucky to have two of the wealthiest people on the planet. Um, <laughs> As donors. Yes, Very and in nice. addition to other, a lot of other Very people nice. are also extremely excited about their money going to Hawaii. So all of Washington, Seattle's money does not stay in Seattle, oh. and they don't care. Oh. I will tell you, there are so many people um, who love to come to Hawaii in February and not be in Seattle for that time frame, <laughs> that there are people who get downright weepy about the idea of maybe being able to do something to help from there. And so when the, the possibility of the building came up, um, we were able to purchase the building itself with donations from Seattle. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. This yeah. just really puts us on the map now. It does. You and, can and, be that headquarters you want to be. Well, and now it's an opportunity for everyone in Hawaii to have a vested interest in this building. Building. Yeah. And so there, we're launching a campaign in 2018 to raise funds to oh, complete good, the building. Good, mm -hmm. good. I'm sure you get the same kind of response as you had before. Yes. Because Donald Trump is going to keep on attacking Planned Parenthood, isn't he? I can't imagine anything else. Yeah. So how effective is that attack? You know, it seems to me that the religious right, you know, super conservatives, mm -hmm. regular conservatives, mm -hmm. <laughs> Congress, yeah. the Republicans in general, are you know finding new ways to attack you? Creative every day, you know, every which way they are attacking. Every day, you. fortunately for us, Jay, they are wildly incompetent. Good. Um, and so their their first three attacks, not only on us but on everybody who is part of the Affordable Care Act, heaven's sakes, that's 32 million people 
in the United States, um, you know, threatened to take away health insurance from all those folks. And while they were at it, make sure that people couldn't use Medicaid when they came into Planned Parenthood. Not that they wouldn't have Medicaid and not that they couldn't use it elsewhere, but as a direct attack on the organization itself. If we can't get paid, we can't survive. And they were attempting to do that. Um, it failed uh, three times, not because of anything that, um, that they were able to do, but because the women, the Republican women senators said no. Um, so we, we claim uh, credit for Lisa Murkowski not being able to vote for that. Yeah, good. Um, Alaska. Yeah, yeah, because she actually understands. It's a, it's a red state. It, it is. Yeah. And she understands and supports women having the ability in Alaska to get care. And so um, we made sure that we spoke to her early and often and that we reinforced her. And so when it came time to take that vote, she voted no. That's great. One, one congressperson at a, at a time. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's fabulous. So, uh, but you know, the, the, it'll continue, and if uh, you know Trump is either reelected or yes. Pence is elected afterward, uh, or re any Republican in that camp, you're going to have to continue dealing with this. We're going to have to work on it every single day, and the next attack is likely to be on the nation's family planning program, Title X, which is um, which is money that is received not only by Planned Parenthood but a good many other providers here in Hawaii, and um, and all throughout throughout the various states, um, and they are able to. Um, fund women that don't have any other way of getting birth control to get birth control. Um, so we're waiting for a set of new and, and we've been told onerous rules that are coming that are likely to um, make it very difficult for women to do appropriate abortion related referrals, talk about choices and decision making, um, you know, cut out some, some uh, providers out of the mix um, if they, they do X and Y and Z. Um, it's likely to be a real game. Yeah, you have to keep on going. But you know what, what troubles me, and it's troubled me for a long time, mm -hmm. is that we're polarized <clears throat> on this issue. And I frankly do not understand why mm -hmm. anybody would oppose a woman's right mm -hmm. um, to an abortion mm -hmm. or, or uh, you know, uh, contraception. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it that drives that? What is happening in our country that sets this up as such a big controversy when it seems, from a moral ethical point of view, so obvious, mm -hmm. well, is it is it religion? Is that what it is? It it is a little bit that, um, but I would say that um, there was a very conscious decision made about thirty years ago um, to make abortion one of the issues on which Republicans raised funds, mm. and they were able to whip their supporters into such a frenzy over it that they can't let it go because they don't have anything else that brings in money. <laughs> Um, they also uh, found that same kind of direct male advantage in attacking the LGBTQ community. And um, once they lost marriage equality as an issue because the Supreme Court decided that, that people were, you know, di it was dignified to allow people to be married to whoever they decided to marry, um, they really only had abortion left. Yeah. And so you can see whenever they get desperate, out comes the flag and it gets waved. Yeah, this is trouble because it's not going to go away. Right. What about the churches in Hawaii, Marge? <clears throat> the oh. churches in Hawaii oppose abortion, I assume. I mean, we I remember I interface. talked to somebody attached to one of the big churches here, mm -hmm. and he was fulminating on the issue, so much so I, I couldn't have a rational conversation with I him. I think it's divided, but we have an interfaith community that is, are, is strongly supports Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. And I think that is more so in Hawaii than the anti-choice. Good. Mm -hmm. So you have a relatively mm -hmm. benign environment then. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So uh, again, you raise the money. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you spend some money lobbying against these guys yes. who are trying to pull your wings out. Yes. Uh, how else? Uh, an education. Tell yes. me about the education arm of it. You want to talk a little bit about that? I do in Hawaii because we have a wonderful education program where folks in Planned Parenthood in Hawaii are available to go out to schools and provide um, information on reproductive health. And in fact, there's this no constraint about that. No. You, know, you have well, cooperation from the educational authorities. People are invited. Mm -hmm. People are invited by Very schools. Good. So it's up to the mm -hmm. schools to invite. And um, this program actually won the Apple Award, mm -hmm. which is a significant is education that from award. Apple? <laughs> no. We wish. It's an, edu it's an education so. award within Planned Parenthood. And so um, we're very proud of this 
really excellent program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it exists on four islands. Um, yeah. So we are, we are also in the process of expanding what we call our teen councils. We decided, Jay, that if, if kids are going to get their sex information from other kids on the street corner, we want the street corner to be incredibly well educated. Yeah, good. So we, um, we get the leadership of the kids that, that are the influential ones in each school. And we take them through our teen council program, give them all kinds of You're good information. You're examining the hierarchy, the, exactly. the schematic of exactly. leadership in the school. And, and um, <laughs> kids love to get information from other kids. You know, once, once you hit like 20, 25, you get old and, you know, clearly your entire uh, job is to make sure nobody young has any fun anymore and no one wants to listen to you. We found that kids listen to each other very well. Yes. And it, not only that, adults let young people express themselves very honestly in ways that get edited later. Yeah. Um, so having edited young, a kind word. super edu educated <laughs> kids in all the schools that are backed up by adult you know, proctors um, allow us to make sure that young people have access to a whole different level yeah. of information. All the time. You got to do that. I mean, I, I, I can't make the comparison with other states. I live, I live here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it strikes me. We've interviewed a lot of charitable organizations that are involved in the social safety net yeah. in Hawaii. Uh -huh. One of the biggest problems is unwed mothers sure. and children who are who only, you know, who don't have a family. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, if, and if you don't have a family, then not only you are at risk and mm -hmm. jeopardy in your life, in your education, in your career, mm -hmm. um, but the whole community is sure. because the community has to take care of you. Yeah. So we're all better off not having unwanted children, don't right. you think? It, yeah. Well, it takes a village. And, um, and when there are babies, um, we need to be sure that we all rally around them. So one of the shocking things to me is here we have an administration that's talking about birth control and, and abortion being evil that is refusing to fund the child uh, insurance program. Like, how do we keep these families together if these parents can't take their kids to the doctor? So the they... first thing you do is you deprive the woman right. of the right to an abortion. Right. And then when she has a child, you beat up on her and right. the child for the unwanted child. Now she's a taker, mm -hmm. and now we won't pay for anything. And and it's it's sort of like, it's, why don't we, mean why don't we what keep it is. people <laughs> into corners where they can't survive? If you're going to insist that everybody have families, then make it possible for people to have families. You don't get to have it both ways. Okay, we're at the end of our time. I have really enjoyed talking with you Thank guys. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for having discussion. But we, we can't go until you tell people how to find you yes. and how to, how to uh, you know, learn from you and contribute money to you. So tell the people. www.plannedparenthood.org. How much of that do you agree with, Marjorie? 110%. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you, Jay. Aloha. Aloha.